As a part of our daily lives, cell phones have become a necessity. It would be difficult and culturally abnormal to see a teen or an adult without a cell phone. It has even become the norm for elementary school students to own and operate a cell phone to contact their parents. One of our focus group participants, Kathy Pickett, a sorority house mother, even said, quote, I can't imagine what it would be like without a cell phone. I don't even remember what it was like before them, end quote. In this world of cellular technology, there exists two models, the smartphone and the dumb phone. Our goal for our research this semester was to determine how cell phone users use their smartphones and dumb phones, especially to observe any connections between cell phones and journalism. Online Media Daily predicts 87% of those surveyed in 2009 say media companies will shift more content to mobile devices in the next two years. Because cell phone technology is rapidly evolving, we see the chance for journalism to break into this new market. But in order for journalism and the industry to do so, we need to figure out how people currently access their news and how they want it on their cell phones and the direction of the future. As journalism students at the University of Missouri, we are as diverse in our cell phone usage as those that we surveyed and those that we interviewed. This is my phone. It's a U.S. cellular old Razor model. I've had it for about six months. It's actually one of my neighbor's old phones. Needless to say, it's a dumb phone. It has uh, no cool capabilities to flip open, but I don't use it for any internet access or email. Uh, the one thing I do use it for is I get text messages from KOMU, so I get news alerts. But for the rest of my news information, I consume it either through the internet or um, through TV or newspapers and magazines. Um, I have a BlackBerry Curve smartphone. I got it in early March, and it's the first smartphone I've ever had. I only had a dumb phone up until this point. Um, the main reason why I got a smartphone is so I could have email updates on it. Um, I could send and receive emails, and I have internet access, which is pretty important to me. Um, and I besides that, I use it for basically placing phone calls, text messaging, just like any other phone. Um, so I receive a lot of news updates on my phone via email, and then what's nice is I could click the link and use my internet access and go to an extended story, um, and I also get my other um, news uh, from the internet. I have an iPhone, and I've had it since December of 2007, and I use it for texting, email, web browsing, basically everything, applications, um, games. I have a dumb phone. This is a flip phone. This is actually a temporary phone, but I have always had a dumb phone. I'm currently uh, in the process of getting a new slider phone, but it's still a dumb phone. Um, I text on my phone. I do phone calls, set an alarm, use a calculator every now and then, but those are just basic functions that I use. Um, as far as accessing news on my phone, I do get text alerts from KOMU. Um, I primarily do the sports updates. That would be my favorite way of getting news. Um, other than that, I just get news online and watch local news and sometimes national news on TV. So what is the difference between smartphones and dumb phones? Despite their prominence in our daily lives, no standard industry definition exists to define these phones. Search mobilecommuting.com defines a smartphone as a wireless telephone set with so special computer-enabled features not previously associated with telephones. The majority of individuals would consider a smartphone a miniature computer. The capabilities of a smartphone consist of email and internet web browsing and programmability whereas applications can be freely removed and added. A dumb phone, therefore, would be lacking in these capabilities. We took these definitions and used them as our building blocks for our research. We formed a hypothesis that stated, if people own smartphones, then they are more likely to access news on their cell phone. This then led us to key research questions. How will smartphones change the future of journalism done on mobile devices? What is holding people back from accessing their news on their cell phones? How can smartphone and dumb phone capabilities be improved? And how soon are people willing to convert to smartphones? We then conducted individual interviews where researchers asked the interview subjects a number of questions regarding their present cell phone use. These questions aim to discover the kind of cell phone they own, 
why they chose that model, and their type of cell phone usage, text messaging, emailing, placing calls, etc. Overall, we found that most of the people we talked to were content with the phone they currently have and found it useful for what they needed it for. All the smartphone users we interviewed said their cell phones are a primary part of their lifestyle. A 21-year-old college student responded about his smartphone saying, Anything I want on my cell phone, I am capable of getting, and often for free. The 21-year-old college student even thinks, quote, More people are going to adopt smartphones. I think it's going to make for a more efficient society. On the flip side from our interviews, we found that the age group above 40 were not as enthusiastic about adopting the cell phone for services other than placing a call. For example, a 40-year-old stay-at-home mom said, quote, texting is a new way to communicate. I feel out of touch. I need to learn. But perhaps the most important and relevant information we took away from our interviews was that none of the interview subjects used their cell phones as their primary news source. A few of the smartphone users had some applications or shortcuts to get quick news from their phones, but most everyone accesses their news primarily online. One of the key ways we gathered information was from a survey of smartphone and dumb phone users ages 18 to 82. Survey respondents shared their thoughts on everything from which cell phone features they use to how often they use their phones. More than 43% of these dumb phone users say they would never frequently read books, magazines, or newspapers on a cell phone, no matter the size of the phone screen. It's clear that every cell phone user has different needs and desires for his or her mobile devices. According to our survey results, though both smartphone and dumb phone users regard their cell phones as very important to their home and social life, 48% of smartphone users regard their phone as very important to their work life. In comparison, only 18% of dumb phone users believe their cell phone is very important to their work life. Smartphone and dumb phone owners also use their cell phones differently. Dumb phone users responded that they use their phones mostly for telephone calls and text messaging. The majority did not use their phones for other purposes. Smartphone owners use their phones not only for calls and text messaging, but also to check email, browse the web, and to take and view photographs. Of 573 survey participants, 227 said they already own a smartphone, while 140 said they would not purchase a smartphone for another two years or more. 87 participants said they would never purchase one. The top four characteristics survey participants said influence their decision to buy a phone are the price of the phone, the cost of its service, the quality of reception, and its ease of use. Our survey results do not strongly support our hypothesis that if people own smartphones, then they are more likely to access news on their cell phone, though there is some correlation. Smartphone owners do access the news more frequently on their cell phones than dumb phone users, but still, the majority of smartphone respondents do not access the news from their phones. 40% of our smartphone respondents have never read news publications from their phones, and 44% have never received news alerts. Comparatively, 94% of dumb phone users have never read news publications from their phone, and 90% have never received news alerts. From all of our research we have done throughout the semester, we believe that smartphones will change the future of journalism done on mobile devices. 3G networking allows for quicker news coverage by professionals as well as citizen journalists. Citizen journalism is beneficial because citizens could capture newsworthy footage through their cell phones at any time, but professional journalists are needed to verify information received from citizen journalists. 3G phones allow internet access to anyone in many places, therefore allowing news coverage to anyone with internet access on their cell phone. If news organizations are able to cater their news products to cell phone users, the smartphone allows endless possibilities for news dispersal.